Konnichiwa, Asenpai des. Welcome to the Learn From The Pro series where we delve into the techniques of professional anime illustrators on X and apply their techniques to our own. In today's video, we'll be focusing our attention on the art goddess herself, Yoneyama Mai. Unlike others studying from the pro's videos on YouTube, we will only prioritize the defining aspects of the artist's artwork. Based on the 80-20 principle, we will extract the crucial 20% from Mai Sensei's work that produces 80% of the impact. So, what's the magic 20% in her art? In my view, it's her mesmerizing hair technique and masterful usage of facial foreshortening. Here's a fun fact. Her pen name is Yoneyama Mai, and Mai means dancing in English. And as you can see from her drawing, most of her characters have flowing dance-like hair. It's kind of like her trademark. Don't worry, it's very easy to learn and apply. This is one of the most important basics when it comes to drawing hair. We can simplify the hair structure into three main sections, which are the bangs, the sides, and the back. To mimic my style, you need to further split the bangs into three more parts, one in the middle and two at the side. We all know that the hair starts from a central point, aka the hair swirl. By drawing this point, it adds a touch of realism to the hair flow. In order to capture Mai's unique style, you will have to illustrate the hair's flow as if it's blown by a gentle breeze. For those starting out, I recommend studying reference images to understand the hair's movement. You will learn general theories and patterns that are commonly used such as hair lifts, gaps, S-shaped flow, and so on. This part is all about relying on intuition to visualize how the hair will look like in the wind. And a good sense of intuition is built upon knowledge and experience. Just like how rhythm is important in dancing, it's equally important in drawing hair too. Think of it as a pattern that guides how the hair flows. Take a moment to look at this illustration. Notice how Mai skillfully draws the hair bangs. The rhythm and pattern of the hair has a nice balance between big and small elements. This rhythmic proportion isn't just about how it looks, it also helps create a sense of depth within your drawing. When you divide the hair into three sections, you'll see that the proportions between these sections generally follow a ratio of big, middle, and small. If the pattern was spread out evenly, it wouldn't have the dynamic rhythm that makes my sensei's work stand out. Also, it's important to make each hair strand different in length, thickness, and spacing. So don't just copy and paste the same hair strands. Another key feature of my style is that she likes to add spins or twists to the hair. These twists create a sense of motion and gives off a voluminous feel. By adding twists, you can make the hair look fuller and more natural. Here's a simple technique to do this. Start by drawing two S-shapes that intersect. Then, close off the ends of the hair and refine the intersection point. Simple, isn't it? One thing that really sets Mai apart is the amount of spins and twists she incorporates into her drawings. Here's a quiz for you. How many layers of bangs did my sensei draw in this illustration? The answer is 5. I'm sure you're tired of hearing adding details as the final step in every hair tutorial on YouTube. This, my kohai, is the essence of adding details. The more layers of hair strands you include, the more professional your drawing appears. A simple rule is to stick to no more than 4 layers. For beginners, 2-3 to three layers is usually enough for drawing the front and side hair. You can use one layer for the back hair because it's not the main focus in our drawing. Another point to consider is the definition of layering. So what is layering? Layering is having one sheet of hair in front and another behind. A good layering allows us to clearly see the different depth of the hair. Usually, I start by drawing the first layer, then add another one on top, and repeat the process. Alright. We've finally reached the part everyone's been waiting for. But before that, let me tell you about today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Skillshare. You may know Skillshare for classes in photography, film and video editing, and illustration. Well, you might be confused since there are so many classes to choose from. But no worries, Skillshare has a drawing learning path ready for you if you're not sure where to begin. And today, I'll be focusing on the learning path called Discover the Art and Science of Drawing. Here, you will learn various drawing basics such as mark making, perspective, proportion, contour, light, and shadow. The classes in Learning Path are designed specifically to equip you with the basics of drawing. If you want to learn how to draw better, now is the perfect time to invest in yourself. The first 500 people to click the link can get one month free trial of Skillshare. Firstly, begin by drawing a face. For this simple demonstration, let's use this frontal face as our example. 
Then, sketch out the hair strips. Imagine you're placing a mop made out of strip cloth on the head. This step tests your ability to apply the two techniques you've learned. Make sure the hair strips follow the structure correctly and move as if it's being blown by the wind. Next up, it's time to divide those larger hair strips into smaller strands. This is where you'll apply your knowledge of rhythm and pattern. Remember to vary the length, thickness, and spacing of each hair strand. Don't forget to add twists and spins to create movement and convey the volume of the hair. This step is often the most challenging in hair drawing and requires plenty of practice to execute it properly. Don't be discouraged if the results don't meet your expectations right away. Finally, incorporate layering into your hair drawing. Aim to separate the hair into two to three layers. And there you have it, folks. Ho ho ho! I can now call myself Yoneyama Mai Jr. Not so fast, my kohai. Yoneyama Mai's art wouldn't be the same without the Yoneyama head lift. Unlike shaft head tilts, Mai's head lift is natural and less painful. In official art terms, this is called facial foreshortening. So to portray my sensei's style, we must include one more element in our drawings, and that is... Basically, just select one of the angles from this facial foreshortening reference pack I found on Pinterest and use the box method to draw it. Yoni Yamamai's preference typically falls within the range of these three angles, so you'll be all set if you can master drawing them. After that, follow the steps we've discussed before. Firstly, prepare a tilted head. Then, sketch out the hair strips. Personally, I would suggest you kuhais to start incorporating layering at this step. Next up, divide those larger hair strips into smaller strands. Remember to add twists to your hair strips. Finally, add more layering. This could mean adding hair threads. And there you have it folks, it's finally done. This is how it looks with proper line art. Phew! We have finally reached the end of the video. What do you kuhais think? If you found this video helpful and gained a lot of value from it, please like and share it. Tell me in the comment section below which professional artist you would like to see me study next and what aspect. Alright, I'll see you in the next one.